What if you could bring a wireless camera into your live broadcast with zero delay so that you can both roam around freely and mix and match it with your existing wired cameras? Well, with the Teradex Spark 4K, you can. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what it is, how easy it is to set up, and I'm gonna put this thing to the test by doing the ultimate latency test and comparing it with other wireless transmitters to prove that this thing really is zero delay. Plus, I'll be showing you how you can use it to improve the production values of your live broadcasts. Let's get straight into it. Right, let's kick things off very quickly with just an overview of the units themselves, talk about some of the tech specs and what you can expect from these things. Firstly, very, very lightweight. They're made out of plastic, but they don't feel cheap. In terms of ports on them, I love its simplicity. If we take a look at the uh, transmission unit first, which is the smaller one, you get an HDMI input, a Type-C connector, a reset button, and an on-off switch. That is it. And it's a similar story, really, on the receiver unit. You get an HDMI output. You do get a DC input for power, and you can also power over the Type-C connector as well. And then you get the reset button and the on-off switch. There isn't that much more to it. There's a display on the front of each device, but there's no menu navigation or anything like that. That display is just for information. And the other thing in terms of physicality to mention is that both of these units do have tripod threads and M3 mounting threads on the bottom. So you can mount these on top of cameras or onto a tripod, whatever you need. But that's pretty much the physicals. If we look at the actual tech specs of them, uh, that's where stuff starts getting fun because this transmission system will actually support up to 4K 30 frames per second. It's HDR capable as well. But I found this perfect for use in the live environment with the A10 Mini because it does support the higher frame rates at 1080p as well. So I've been using it at 1080p 50 frames. I've been using it at 1080p 60 frames per second. And this supports it perfectly fine. Of course, I mentioned it in the intro as well, but the key unique selling point of this one is it's zero delay. Uh, Teradex say there's actually less than one millisecond of latency for the transmission of this unit. And if you're like me, if you're broadcasting in 1080p 50, well, one frame is 20 milliseconds. So you're certainly not going to see any, uh, any delay or anything like that when there's less than one millisecond with this. And I'll prove that a little bit later on in this video with the latency tests. In terms of transmission distance, you actually get up to 500 feet line of sight. So if you're outside, you can expect to get around 500 foot. But this does operate on the five gigahertz band, which is less susceptible to objects being in the way of the line of sight as well. So I've used it indoors to transmit a signal from one room to the other with a wall and a couple of doors and things like that in between. And it has worked perfectly fine. I actually was at an event using this and I shot some B-roll and I wanted to play it in now, but annoyingly, I just realized that the event was for Jimmy Chu launching their autumn 2022 collection. So I can't show you any of this stuff in there because it doesn't come out till 2022. So never mind, just you have to take my word for it. It does work very well indoors as well as outdoors. And the last thing I do just want to mention about uh, the actual kit itself with the transmission unit, one of the things I love is it does have an internal battery. So when you plonk this on top of a camera or mount it on top of a camera, the only cable you need is one cable going from the HDMI input into your camera because you can use the internal battery on this, which lasts up to two hours for power. So you don't even need to power it. If you need longer, of course, you've got the Type-C connector on the back and you can power it from the wall or as I've done in the past as well, I've just taken the Type-C connector and plugged it into my portable battery bank and that will give you extra juice and extra time for your wireless transmission. Okay, so that's pretty much all the tech specs and everything you need to know. Let me show you now how easy it is to get it all plugged in and within minutes, get a wireless signal going from your camera to your switcher. I've got my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera here and all I'm gonna do is mount the Spark TX unit to the top of the camera. And again, I'm not gonna plug in any battery, external battery or anything like that. I'm gonna run it all off of the internal power of the Spark. And then I've got an HDMI cable running from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And I'm just gonna plug that into the HDMI input of the Spark 4K transmitter there. And then I'm gonna turn that on. Actually, before I turn it on, let's wire up the uh, receiver unit. So if we flip over to the other camera, you'll see I've got the transmitter, uh, the receiver unit here. 
And the only two cables that I'm going to need is the HDMI cable. So I'm just going to plug that in there and then the power cable there. And that is running into input number four of my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. And then all you need to do is boot on both units. So flick the switch on the back there, turn on the camera here, and then turn on the spark transmitter unit. And it takes a few seconds for them to scan channels, find out which one has the clearest frequency and then connect to each other. But within a few seconds, there we go. You can see it's just popped up on the multi view there. The units will be connected. Let's just focus this up a little bit. There we go. And now we have a completely wireless camera where I can roam around with zero delay. And uh, well, actually, I'll show you the delay next in the latency test. But I'm able to get a completely wireless camera into my live stream setup. And you can see how simple and quick that was. Now, I mentioned before, there's no menus or anything like that. So what appears on the readout is very simple. On the transmitter unit, you just get a confirmation that it is sending video and it tells you the frame rate and the resolution that it's sending as well. And it also does tell you what frequency band it's on and currently transmitting over. As well as on the transmitter unit, you get an indication of the battery life left of the internal battery. On the receiver unit, it's very similar. You get confirmation that you're receiving video, a little link uh, indication status as well. So it'll tell you whether it's good or bad link, an indication of what frequency band it's operating on, as well as a little indication as well about the voltage and how the device is being powered. Because of course, this can be plugged into the wall or the receiver can be battery operated as well. So you can have everything battery operated. There's no internal uh, battery in the receiver, but you can power it over the USB using, again, external battery packs. So you can see using this Teradek Spark 4K setup, how easy it is to bring in a wireless camera to your live streaming production. And of course, the key thing is that it is zero delay. So you can mix and match it with cameras that are directly wired into your switcher. And that's what I want to show you now. So what I've done is I've taken my main camera here. I've taken an HDMI feed out of it and put it into an HDMI splitter, which gives me four identical outputs of this camera. So output number one, I'm sending directly to my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. So that simulates as if the camera was connected directly. Output number two, I'm going to send to the Teradek Spark 4K. And then output number three, I'm going to send to another wireless transmission system, which is the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. But that one doesn't have zero delay. It's actually got around 80 milliseconds of latency. So I, the reason I'm throwing that one in is to show you the difference when we compare them side by side. Um, you'll be able to see the difference and also the difference in picture quality as well between all of these signals going into the ATEM. So let's take a look at that now. What you're seeing on the screen right now then is actually my ATEM multi-view as a four box so that you can see a bigger preview. In the top left, you've got the direct connection from the camera straight into the ATEM mini. On the top right, you've actually got the camera going into the Spark 4K wireless transmitter and then the wireless receiver is connected to input number four on the ATEM mini. And then in the bottom left, You've got the same setup, but with the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. So that's going into the wireless transmitter. And then the receiver for that is going into input number five on the ATEM Mini. And so the first thing you'll be able to see, hopefully, is as I put a bit of fast motion in there, like this, the top two are in sync. So the direct connection and the, uh, the um, Spark 4K are both in sync, but the Hollyland Mars 400 is just lagging behind a little bit. And that's because it, as I say, it has about an 80 millisecond delay or so. The way that we'll really be able to test that is by using a stopwatch. So I'm going to start a stopwatch here and hold it up to the camera so that we can see it. And then I'm going to go into the editor and hopefully we should see that the top two are perfectly in sync when we pause the footage, but the Hollyland Mars at the bottom is just lagging behind by somewhere around 80 milliseconds or so. So I pause the footage here and if we take a look at the stopwatch on the phones, we've got 16.05 for the direct HDMI and exactly the same for the Teradek Spark. They are in sync. The Hollyland though is as expected lagging behind. It's showing 15.91. And actually, if we just advance the timeline forward, you see everything stays uh, in sync for the top two. Um, but the Hollyland is lagging behind. Here it's showing 16.00. At the top here, we've got uh, 1620. So there's around about 200 milliseconds of delay there. Uh, I thought it would only be around 80, but it looks like there's even more for the Hollyland than expected. 
And you can see again, if we keep advancing, the top two remain completely in sync. So there's one good way of showing the zero delay. The other way that I've been doing it is if I actually just switch between the direct HDMI connection and the Spark 4K connection on the ATEM, you can see that as I jump between the two, there is no visible difference at all. There's no cuts or anything like that. Even as I'm moving, I'm switching. So we're on three, which is the direct, four, the Spark, back to three. There's none at all. But if I start to introduce the Hollyland Mars into that, you'll start seeing cuts and also a degradation in quality as well. So this is the direct HDMI connection on three. This is the Spark 4K on four. And now this is the uh, Holy Land Mars 400S. And if we just go between four, which is the Spark and the Holy Land Mars, you might be able to just see that the degradation in quality as well as the uh, increased latency as well. So uh, the Spark 4K, is sending a visually lossless signal as well. I can't tell any difference between the direct HDMI and the Spark 4K signal, but I am seeing some degraded quality, mainly due to, I'm assuming, compression with the Holyland Mars 400 uh, S Pro. So that's another benefit you get from the Spark 4K. Now, before I dive into the different ways that you can actually use this Spark 4K wireless transmission system, let me talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. With topics like film and video, graphic design, illustration, photography, marketing, and many more, it's an amazing way to get started learning something new or grow your skills by learning from experts. So if you're looking to learn about animation, for example, then Jake Bartlett's Animating With Ease in After Effects course is the one for you. Or maybe you want to up your YouTube game. If so, definitely check out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class. I'm taking it at the moment and have found it so useful when it comes to writing my scripts and planning out my videos. And I know many of you who watch my videos for black magic stuff are looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Well, Skillshare has a number of classes for both color grading and editing that are perfect for beginners. Like this DaVinci 17 course from Mustafa Nassar, He's created short but detailed videos explaining each section of DaVinci and all of the effects and functions built into it. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because I've teamed up with Skillshare on this video, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. So you can see how powerful a wireless transmission system like this actually is. And I wanted to give a few examples of other ways it can be used. Obviously, firstly, the main way that I think a lot of people are gonna use this is how I've displayed right here to create a wireless camera and bring that into your live production switcher. But there are other ways, right? So to give you an example, you could use it to bring in a computer feed. So let's say you're doing a conference and you've got a lectern at the front of the stage and then you're at the very back of the room with all the live production uh, switcher and, and all your kit, rather than having long SDI or HDMI cable runs, you just put the transmitter unit at the lectern and then as people come, they just plug in their laptops, that starts wirelessly sending the presentation to you and then you've got the receiver on your end plugged into the ATEM and you can incorporate that as part of the show. So bringing in a computer feed is one thing with gaming as well you can plug it into something like a ps5 or an xbox another way as well is actually how i used it when i mentioned jimmy chu earlier and the gig i did there i wasn't using it to bring in a wireless camera i was using it in the reverse we actually had a room where we needed to show people the program output so what i did is i got the transmitter unit and plugged it into the hdmi output or HDMI 2 output of my ATEM Mini Extreme, sent program to the Spark 4K out of that output, and then had the receiver plugged into a big screen in another room where they were all watching it and the quality was fantastic. And again, there was no latency as well. Um, so they were able to get or watch a full resolution version of the live stream as it was going out because I was sending it via the Spark to another room. It worked brilliantly. And then other places where I think a system like this would really benefit would be, you know, live events, things like music gigs, weddings, funerals, where having a roaming camera and some gives you more flexibility to move around to get a different type of shot. And obviously the reason that, that the Spark 4K sort of sets itself apart from other wireless transmitters, especially in these areas, is because it is 
zero latency. So you're not going to have any of those sync issues, which is key for things like music where everything, you know, you don't want to see the lips out of sync when you cut to a camera of someone singing, but also again, sporting events, anything where there's fast motion or anything like that, you don't want to see a jump when you switch between the wired cameras and the wireless. So zero delay becomes really important there. And I think there's maybe 101 other situations where a wireless transmission system would really benefit your production. Let me know in the comments if you've got any suggestions or if you're, you're thinking about picking one of these up and trying it out for, for your system. So I've done a lot of singing its praises here on this video, but I always like to end my reviews with uh, either some recommendations or things that I would like to see improved. And really over the last, I'd say two months of using this, I can't fault it at all. It's worked every time and it's worked flawlessly. But I want to try and find something that I can at least suggest a Teradek to do for version 2 or in a firmware upgrade. And I think I found two things. The first one being, and I don't even know if this is possible, I would love to see in a way, in the way that we're able to plug our Blackmagic cameras into an ATEM switcher and get a two-way communication. So not only are we sending video to the switcher, but also we're sending ancillary data back to the camera. So we get things like tally lights and being able to color grade the camera uh, and things like that. I would love that to be in this wireless system as well. So even though you're wireless, you can still get tally lights on your camera. You can still adjust the color grade, um, trigger the remote record and things like that. And that requires the ancillary data being sent back from the switcher to the camera. So I don't know if that's possible, but Teradek, if it is, please include this in a version two of the, of the Spark because I'd pay a lot of money for that feature personally. And I'm sure many of you watching this right now would. And then the second thing is is tiny, but it's an improvement. I'd love to see more um, from the battery indication. And to give you an example, when you plug in the Teradex Spark to power when it's it's turned off because you want to charge the uh, internal battery, there's actually no indication that the device is charging. Nothing comes up on on the screen or anything like that. So that's one improvement that they can make. Uh, similarly as well, when you are using it on internal battery, the actual uh, battery indicator I find really small and not much information. It just gives like whether it's full, half full or pretty much empty. That gives me a little bit of anxiety. I'd love to see like a percentage indicator so that I know, okay, I've got 10% of battery left. Let me plug in a, a power bank so that I can use it for another hour. Again, being very niggly here because the device is so great, but I wanted to find something to at least uh, recommend for the future. And that's pretty much everything there is about the Teradex Spark 4K. It's a fantastic unit. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. That really does help. Also, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and then you'll get notified when I drop new tech and broadcast related videos. If you have any questions, by the way, about the Teradex Spark 4K or any of the products that I've featured on my channel, put them down in the comments section below. I read through all of them and we'll get back to as many as possible. And finally, if you need specific help on your setup, my email address is on screen now. You can pop me an email to that email address and we'll set up a one-to-one -one consulting session. Maybe you've got some questions about incorporating a wireless camera into your setup or any other questions. Ping me an email, we'll get that set up for you. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.